Hello everybody, uh, Mr. Chandler here, going over the uh, derivations uh, I mentioned that we do in class. So we're going to do oh, go over how to derive the first two kinematic equations that are on your formula charts that you got the other day. And then we'll revisit the uh, derivation we did in class um, on Monday, I think it was. So just to kind of recap that and go over that again, now you've seen some more derivations. So this is just kind of practice, you to kind of watch, see how this is done and you know follow through the steps and so it makes sense to you. Because sooner or later, you might have to do something like this on your own. So let's get started. First derivation we're going to do is uh, the first kinematics equation. Right? So how do we solve for this thing? So we're going to do the exact same thing we did on, I think it was Monday, in class, where we looked at, um, it's a line. And so we're going to use the slope-intercept form of the equation of a line, which is y equals mx plus b. And just like I did then, we're going to kind of just replace some of these mathematical symbols with the physics versions of those symbols. Um, so what's on the y-axis is the velocity. That's what we're measuring on the y-axis. So instead of having a y, I'm going to replace it with a v. And that's going to equal the slope. But the slope uh, on a velocity time graph, as we discussed today in class, and I'm recording this on Thursday evening. So as we discussed on Thursday evening today, September 1st, 2022, uh, the slope of a velocity time graph is the acceleration. And I'll write that over here. So remember, slope equals a for acceleration. So I'm going to replace the m with an a. The x, what we're we measuring on the x-axis is, of course, time. So we put a t in there for x. And then plus b is the y-intercept. So on the y-intercept, we have what our initial velocity was. Right down here, where we start, uh, at t equals 0 is our initial velocity, v naught, on the y-axis. And so this, if you look at your formula charts, I think it's arranged differently. I think we could just rearrange this like this, v naught plus a t. Right? It doesn't matter what order we add them up in, right? So this is the actual equation, the first one on your formula charts, and that's where it comes from. And now you guys see that. Pretty straightforward. Um, so kind of the convergence of the mathematical world and the physics world there. Now let's go to the uh, next equation. Now we're going to derive that second equation you have on your formula charts. Um, this is a little bit trickier, you know, longer, I guess. Not trickier necessarily, but um, all right. So take a look at that. Now for this one, I want to get a graph like this. You'll notice that I'm not starting at the um, origin. I'm starting above the origin, so I have some v naught here, some value there, and it goes increases my speed uh, to some point. And we know that um, if I draw like this point here, and I go down to my x-axis, we discussed in class today, again, Thursday, September 1st, 2022, that the area under this curve is the displacement. But, uh, again, like I said in class today, if you know the, what a trapezoid is, cool, good for you, I can never remember. So I always break it down into two pieces. I take it as rectangle here and then a triangle up here, and I'm going to add them up for displacement, right? So let's see, that means that my displacement delta x will equal this area, right, plus this area. So the area of the rectangle, all right, area of the rectangle plus the area of the triangle, right? If I add them up, then I should get the total displacement, or delta x, right? So let's see what happens. So, all right, so we know the area of a rectangle is the base times the height, that's it. Well, my base is gonna be t here, right? Or you can say delta t if you wanna be fancy. Delta t times the height. Now the height is gonna be from the origin zero here up to my v naught, right? It's not going past, it's not, it's not up here to v, it's just up here to this v naught value, right? So it's actually delta t, let's put them in the right order. It's v naught times delta t. I think, I think your formula sheets has it this order. I can draw a triangle, there we go. So that's the rectangle area. We got that, let's shade that in so we know, okay, we did that one. Now we're gonna add that to the area of a triangle. And of course that is gonna be one half, the base times the height. And again, the base is the time. So it's gonna be T times this uh, height. Now we gotta be careful here because we're not measuring from the origin all the way up to you know, the height goes to here, right? Some value here. We're not going from the origin up to here. We're only going from the V naught value right here to, that's the height of the triangle, right? From V naught to V. All right, so the difference there is gonna be V, this is v, the V value here, minus this V naught, right? That's gonna be uh, the difference. So let me show you this better. 
from here all the way to here, this is V-naught, right? And then from here to, up to here is V. So if I go from the zero all the way up to V, whatever that number is, and I subtract out this value, I kind of get rid of it, I'm left with just this amount, right? Which is the height of this triangle from, he from here to here, right? I hope that makes sense. Um, all right, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take V minus V naught. So I'm gonna take this V minus V naught over here. And that's gonna be the height of my triangle. And now maybe you're thinking, well, that doesn't look much like that equation that I have in my formula chart, so we're not done quite yet. I want you to remember one other thing we talked about. If we look, go back and look at the equation that we just derived, V equals V naught, um, uh, what was <laughs> brain farted, plus AT, wow, I forgot what it was for a second. Um, and I do this, and I'm gonna rearrange it a little bit, I'm gonna subtract the V naught over, so it's gonna be V minus V naught equals AT. I want you to look here, what do we have here? And what do we have here? Hmm, those are the same thing, they're both V minus V naught. So this is gonna, we're gonna do something right here called substitution, which you hopefully have done or will do very soon in your math classes. If we have two quantities like this, two terms, or not really a term, but an expression, like V minus V naught, and it equals well, something like AT, then we can replace any other instance where we see the same quantity V minus V naught, like we do right here, we can replace that with the quantity AT because they're equivalent, right? They equal each other. V minus V naught is AT, they're the same thing. So we can take this V minus V naught, and I'm going to replace it with AT. So I'm gonna have delta X equals V naught times delta T, plus one half times t. And instead of writing v minus v naught, I'm gonna replace it with at, because that equals at, so I'm at there. And I'm gonna multiply all things, I'm gonna times this t here and there, and there. I'm gonna get, I want to do it this way, t times at, there's no real need for that parentheses. Got two t's, t times t is gonna be t squared. Say hello to the camera, Warren. This is my stepson. Say hi, Warren, you're on camera. You're being filmed right now. Hi. All right. Warren can do this equation, guys. If y'all can't, then <laughs> yeah. he's only seven, so come on. Uh, v naught <laughs> delta t plus one half a. Oops. What's, what's what? E a t here, squared. Please. And now you see it's starting to look really familiar. So all I got to do here is kind of move these around, right? Again, they're being added, so it doesn't matter what order I add them up. Then delta x equals one half a t squared plus V naught T, and that is the equation you have on your formula chart. That's the same one. Um, of course, we, I talked about before how I don't write X minus X naught, I just put delta X in there. But it's the same equation. Uh, so cool, so there you go. That's how we derive this stuff, right? We kind of use the graph and we substitute in some certain terms. And uh, there we go. Now we'll go back and quickly look at the original graph we had done. Um, on Monday, which was this one here, right? Position time graph. And the same thing we did. We started with the equation we already know, y equals mx plus b, the slope intercept form. And what are we measuring on the y axis is position. So we just replace that with an x because of the, in physics, instead of saying y, we are graphing x position on the y axis. Okay, this is not distracting at all. Um, the slope is velocity because the, the rate of change of position with respect to time is velocity. So we replace the velo m with v. On the x-axis, we're graphing the time, so we replace that with a t. And then we have the y-intercept, which is going to be the original position where we start at. And in this example, it's the origin. So we write x naught, and there we have our equation that we derived on Monday. I'm almost done. Hold on. It was right on Monday, and now you kind of, maybe this gives you more practice, more experience, kind of seeing it again of how we got that, right? Again, we, all we did here and all we did here and here was start with an equation we already know. In this case, it was the equation of areas, so a little bit different. And, and this one is the equation of a line. Let me see you. Okay. And, um, and then we kind of go from there, and we just replace the symbols with physics symbols, and we kind of converted the slope into velocity because we know that the slope... David? On, Oh, what's that? The slope of this line, of this graph on a position time graph is velocity, so we just replace the m with the v, the x with a t, and the b with an x naught. So I hope that clears up any confusion you had. You watch this a million yeah. times if you need to about hey, about um, 
it, oh, I'm sorry, I lost my thought. Hope it clears up any confusion you had over this process. You can watch it a hundred times if you need to, or, or not, you know. But um, eventually, we'll be doing. You guys will be doing this sort of thing in class. So you want to kind of. I want y'all to get used to seeing it and get a little bit of practice in there, and to understand the process. All right. So hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow, which is Friday, and uh, bye bye. Bye. Say bye. Warren. Oh. Warren. It's right here, bud. Okay. Bye. <laughs>